Greetings, goons, gangsters, and gamers. It's your boy, the Good Sir Knight, and it is officially 2024. Happy belated New Year. In the video off relatively early, the stars have aligned, and I finally have time to make a video for you all. It's something I've been wanting to do for quite a while, and I have something that recently came in, also relatively new, so you know, New Year, new item. We're going to do a little review on it, because there's a few relatively interesting things I've noticed right off the bat about this item. In this particular case, the reason I'm wearing my cool helmet today is because we're going to be reviewing another helmet, the Opscore SF Bump Helmet. So when the SF series came out, it was sort of like a... They really agreed that the Maritime really had the best super high cut. Everyone liked it. Well, I say everyone, you get the idea. A lot more people liked it more than the standard high cut. Weight, save, or, uh, weight savings, you got all the uh, cool larger com integrations, all sorts of cool things you can do, which is why even the Maritime had a uh, retrograde kit that came out that had um, all sorts of cool things. But there's even some cooler, newer technology in this bump helmet that even sets it aside from the one I'm wearing now, and definitely sets it aside from the older bump helmet. It's actually got a couple notes. And you know, if I'm taking notes, things are actually relatively serious. So, without further ado, I'm actually going to take this off, because the uh, amps make it really hard to tell how loud I'm talking and I can hear every other person in the building right now. So, with that said, let me go ahead and kill these. There we go. Alright. Normal person hours. So, we got a cool high-speed helmet here. And this is what you're basically basing a lot of things off of. So, the SF series was coming out. What are the... Oh, where to start? This is actually a bit of a challenge. So, bump helmet. The old school bump helmets were decent. They were built in the uh, high cut, sort of standing off the super high cut like the Maritime. The Maritime kind of won out in the end. With the high cut sort of shell, they were alright, but old bump helmets had a thing of I can take. I don't have um, a bump helmet. My buddy had one that we borrow, but the big thing I noticed is they tend to flex a lot. It's not too bad with the Protex. I think Protex actually held it better because they had that uh, bicycle sort of helmet lining. But the old bump helmets Oh boy, they would flex. They would flex quite a bit, which, but then again, you know, it's a bump helmet, you know, keep your head from banging into things. And, uh, you know, maybe get hit by baseball bats. I don't know how crazy your life is. I don't do that inner city urban living name for me, but, you know, bump helmet, basic. Everyone gets the idea of a bump helmet. Now, Oscore went ahead and did several key things with this fellow. So, right off the bat, you'll notice the way the shell is painted. Weird thing to bring up, but it's got that sort of like texturized stucco, if you uh, accidentally bump the TV, your parents are gonna beat you, sort of like texture to it. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so it's got that cool sort of like stuc stucco thing, and the key thing is they've changed up the formula. I think they use, um, I'm not sure the exact material they don't necessarily list it, it's more of a fiberglass sort of thing, so whatever it is, this helmet is incredibly stiff. Which you would only really see with the, um, the Opscore old, uh, carbon fiber helmet. I had the old one back in the day. Same sort of, like, paint stucco pattern. And, uh, almost impossible to crush with your bare hands. I don't know, maybe I need to hit the gym a lot more. But, yeah, so you got your standard sort of, um, uh, what are these little vents going on? Like you do with a bump helmet. And you'll notice it's oddly bald up here on the top. Usually you'd have, um an extra cut of fabric down here, or your little uh, Velcro. Actually, I think it's two cuts. Yeah, two cuts on the side. And then you'd even have two more up here on the front. So right off the bat, they're jipping you on the Velcro. That's where all the cut, the price savings are. Nah. You can add some if you want. I know with my um, Mohawk cameras, they actually come with a big uh, slap of Velcro. So if you want to run a camera on this, good news. You can put your Hellstar back here. You can put... Whatever you put here, I like to just keep a name tag back there, and yeah, you're more or less good. So, you can still get your camera going, you can still have your Hellstar, so you a little light, beep beep, let people know what you're doing. And, uh, pretty cool. So on the inside, the shell is really thin, by the way, if you look here, that is a very, very thin shell. And it doesn't weigh all that much, either. In fact, um, speaking of the notes, the big thing I was interested in was the uh, ultimate weight, so, the bump helmet weighs 835 grams. I like grams, easy number to work with. But, in standard speak, 1.84 pounds. Not bad. 
The carbon fiber helmet, which I, S of carbon fiber, I do not have, very interested in, fancy looking helmet, 692 grams, 1.53, so about, what, 30.31 pound difference, not huge, probably a little noticeable, and of course, this is all loaded out, by the way, with the liner and all that stuff going on, of course, ballistic 2.33, so, 1,059 grams. So with that in mind, the pump helmet isn't all that much heavier than the carbon fiber. Now, of course, supposedly the carbon fiber is going to be a bit more environmental resistant and a bit stronger, but all things considered, given the ultimate rigid frame of the bump helmet, pretty freaking neato. And of course, you can get a little cover for this, help keep the uh, paint job intact. Comes with the modular bungee shroud, something that they also sold with the uh, upgrade kit, something comes standard with the SF helmets. And oh, the rails. Let's get to the rails here in just a second. You got your standard OCC dial. They do make the warm dial and stuff. I just, I already got an OCC dial. I'm getting an OCD. Friggin' obsessive compulsive disorder is what we're going on with it, but pretty cool. You got your standard stock pads going on in here. They're comfortable, they're good. Um, they do make the uh, 40 friggin' super comfort pads, which I've got installed in this guy. The comfort pads make a world of a difference. They're much softer, far more comfortable, really good protection. I definitely like this um, this nape pad going on here. The soft one makes huge difference, whereas the stock is just the little flat guy. But of course, the helmet weighs practically nothing, so you're not going to notice it too much. If you got the extra hundred or so to spare, I would upgrade, personally. Doable, fantastic. Bit, bit of a difference, really um, comfort base. So, Helmets is decent. I always get a large, large fits my big old dome. And just like the um, thing, they, do, they moved away from the uh, standard head strap. You do have the bands going to the side. All la uh, freaking cam fit style. So these bolt in up on the front and pushes your head into that front pad. Makes everything a bit more comfortable. But it also alleviates a lot of other problems. So, I've been putting it off for the whole start of the video. The rails. So before the bump helmet came out, one of the big upgrades that OpsCore introduced is the, uh, what are they called, the Power Path arc rails. Power Path, kind of crazy, right? So with the um, helmet I got here, we actually have the skeletonized arc rails, as you can see. It's a two-piece system. You got the overall rail portion going on here, and underneath you have a little shim. And that shim is what everything connects to. Your Mandible, your, um, honestly, I, I've never really just used it for the mandible, the freaking carbon fiber mandible, so. But it'll all mount up in there, there's a little space cut into the, actually, no, there's not even a space cut into the outer arc rail. There's just that opening from the shim, and that's what lets you clip your ch -ch 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 mandible little teeth in there. And, uh, yeah, so that was pretty cool, and, um, you don't have a lot of openings up at the top, a few like small slots, nothing you could really run cables or anything to. So you're always kind of limited in the um, cable aspect. So as far as bump helmets go, outside of just like training on boats, jumping out of, well, I think the carbon fiber is preferred for jumping out of planes, but you know, you're zip lining pretty much anything where your head can bang into something and go watermelon to pavement, which you don't want. Bump helmets are pretty fantastic. And given the price range, Pretty affordable, honestly. So, the rails here. These are the new power arc rails. So, first off, one piece construction. Something I really like. Honestly, by the end of this video, don't be surprised if these rails end up swapped out with the other helmet. But yeah, power, power arc rails. So, it's kind of hard to explain. You can kind of see all these deep openings and everything going on here, but it gives you a lot to work with. And of course, since it's all set up in one setup, one little sort of piece, they do have more of a cutaway for the mandible to fit in. You know, this top cutaway for mounting. I actually don't know what you're mounting. I think it's for the um, ballistic applique, a little uh, attachment you can make to ballistify bump helmets and stuff, so you can get a little bit of ballistic protection. So like the uh, what was it the coxswain helmet they had going for a wee bit. But yeah, you got all these crazy things. Yeah, I like this part right here. This little opening up above the little dovetail, perfect place to mount, uh, mount uh, elastic to mount onto your 
camera and stuff. Or your Hellstar. As with me, I just got a little thing running through the little nub there. Connects to a carabiner that's looped in on itself and that connects to the Princeton Tech. And that's how I'm retaining it because there's ultimately just no space in here to put something. So, fantastic fix right off the bat. Um, moving on. I'll give a more specific example. So, with the first helmet, you can see the arc rail in detail here. This is what the retrograde kit came with. This is what the uh, earlier helmets were coming out with. You got your overall rail itself, and then you got the shim. The shim's there. You got your little mount points up at the top here, down here at the bottom, and that's pretty much all it did. But it's fantastic because you can use the cool new accessories. So with this new one that came out, this was only a couple months ago, really. I think like two or three months tops with the, with the bump helmet coming out. They went to the power arc rail. As you can see, similar sort of idea, but now you can actually unscrew it and you can run cables either out through the top or out through the bottom. So bump helmets really, really excel as being a night vision mounting solution. The other key reason to have one. Low weight, low cost, you mount your nods up on the front, slap on a... Ugh. No, no, I pulled up my rug. Counterweight or battery, they do make battery cases too, so if you have the fancier night vision, then all you gotta do is mount that battery on back there, run the battery cable through one of your rails of choice, and bam, you can clip that right into your night vision device. And you don't have to worry about the cable getting snagged or having to tape it on down all the time. Really cool solution. I'm a big fan. But that's the good thing I wanted to show you guys. But the shell thickness was the other one, so... Your cooler, high-speed shell thickness. And then the even thinner shell thickness. Um, so, yeah. So, with this whole rail, let's go ahead and put it through its paces. So, of course, same... Sort of like padding, same little, well, the stock padding instead of the newer high-speed padding. Uh, let's um, start with so the mandible, the big one. I particularly like this guy. All you gotta do is find those grooves. This is easier to do before you get started and have the helmet on your head. But I am determined to do things my way. It's there somewhere. It does take a little bit more work, I've noticed. I think it's because it's right up against the helmet. But shabam! There you go. And if you ever get, like, thirsty or you just want to, like, get a lollipop or a hot dog or something, you can always open up that little visor there. But bam! It's in. You got the whole carbon fiber mandible going on. You can talk. You can, um... Oh, I didn't pull out my... I did pull out my goggles. So... These do use that SF rail mounting. I don't have any extra clips with me. I'd probably buy an entire second thing, but yeah. Mount that guy up in there. Play click. It's not gonna it's not gonna work perfectly, all things considered. Ah, I don't have any room. I don't have any room! Okay, so it's a bit tighter, but you get the idea. You would mount this in on there. And yeah, there we go. Then these guys would clip back there onto the things, and boom, you look really, really cool. And laser protected. Ah, all right. Bit more work, but the freaking step and visor works, mandible works, off to a pretty Gucci start. That said, pull the tabs there, bam, mandible's off. The Soter, S-O-T-R, Find the dovetails, click in there, pull down the chin, click in there, click over right here, and now no one can really no one can really hear what I'm talking about, but that's okay. As you can see, now you can breathe, you got your tails going on, and this can still fit over ear pro. And there's still room right up here that if I had a cable to sort of dummy line any of the stuff I need to keep with me. It will stay secured, and I will be fantastic. It can peel off, and it will just dangle. I'm not going to lose it. Which is good, because if you lose your gear, you should be reprimanded intensely. <sighs> oh, I love this. I love this. I don't use enough mic jack and everything going on there. So pretty, pretty cool. And then you can go full on pilot mode, and you just freaking... There's my clippy. 
and you're good. Ha ha. Fix that chin strap. So yeah, everything you would really need to work with the helmet works with the new rails. So of course, I don't see them selling the rails online just yet. I know you can get the skeletonized rails as a retrofit kit, but these are like brand new out of the factory. They only come with the helmet. So you gotta find someone who's managed to be silly enough to smash their helmet to buy their old rails off them. Now, with that said, um, that's the majority of things. Everything else kind of like works. Uh, there was one other thing I wanted to go over about. What was it? Ah, uh, yes. So, way back in the day, and for some reason that baffles me to this day, the uh, Mitch helmet, the modular integrated communication helmet. Um, yeah, so there's a groove in the uh, padding up here, as you can see. And that groove is for headbands. So what we're going to do is I'm going to pull these pieces of padding out. And as you can see right there, you have a little, was it a plus sign? Yeah, plus and a minus. And that's where your headband goes. Because the uh, it bolts to the front, instead of doing the whole headband thing, you don't need to weave the headband through these guys. These will sit on the outside and not interfere. So this makes it a lot easier to run a headset underneath your helmet if you don't want to have them mounted to the helmet like I do with the amp. So, for these purposes, I have a set of Contact 5s. Yes, another set of Contact 5s. Things do be happening. I be in situations. So we're gonna set these guys up and give that a little tug. This little tug. And yeah, so. What in tar nation is going on here? All right. Are you good? You feeling all right? No? All right, cool. So, we're going to set this guy up here. And what we're going to want to do is first you want to put on the headset. Get that tightened down. Give me one sec. Da, da, da. Ooh, this is still like brand, brand new. This needs a little work. Definitely um, comparable to the uh, tch -tch -tch, the amps but you know by 3M a little bit different not terribly so much like well with the Mitch you had to sort of like struggle to set them up and with the old bump helmets you really had to struggle to set them up but this one is a lot easier so if you're just running your comms and oh no I need to get oh my velcro fell off <laughs> oh no I need to get headgear on, but I don't want to sacrifice my hearing. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to run generally the cable and the mic through. That's the big thing. You want to get that through this part. And then you want to get this on your head. It's important to get these guys through. This is where you're, this is all your struggling on the left side. Once you got those guys on, just the headset a little forward and backwards so it sits in that groove nicely. Yeah, reclip this guy. A little bit, a little bit tired, yeah, because I'm still on the headset, that's why. But bam, check that out. Headset is on, hearing's protected the entire time. I run my little cable through here, PTT attachment, little NATO plug, was it the U94, whatever, and we can uncoil that, plug it in, and we are headset compatible, heads protected. Now for the real challenge. Can we still attach a mandible? I never tried the mandible with the Comtac 5s. Um, like mostly just because I know this has to go right up on the nose. Give you a little mustache. But I, I, almost, I almost see if this works. I didn't even think about this till right now. That's how you know it's a good video. Clip these guys in. Come on. Work with me. Ugh. Come on. We'll figure it out, don't worry. I'm a determined professional. Ugh. Aha! Is that clipping? That's not clipping. Let's try the, uh, let's try this side first. This is where all the trouble is. Aha! My mic is in my mouth. He does not want to play nicely. Alright, it's a little challenging. 
Maybe not the easiest, but nothing a little practice can't solve. There's a there's a bar at the bottom of the YouTube screen. It'll let you uh, skip to whenever I'm successful. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, I think the size is a little wonky. That's why. There we go. Oh, haha. -ha. Microphone's going. Headset's in place. I have to control my little goggles. I do have goggles. Yeah, I got my little red. Ah, maybe I probably should have put these on first. Oh well, this is a pain. Um, if you have, yeah, if you have Mark One's glasses. Oh my God, it's digging into my ear. Ah, okay. Yeah, the things you can do for YouTube, insane, right? Hey, look, I still got eye protection. I got the whole shebang. Cool. All right. This is... I should have put the iPro on first. That's the secret. You put the iPro on, then the ear pro. And oh my god, this sucks. Me. Ugh. Your mileage may vary. Whew, boy. Ow, my ear. I think I'm bleeding. Anyway. <laughs> uh, I'm going to turn these off. Now I can't even hear myself talk, which is a good sign. Good seal. We're just gonna... Actually, you know what? Just pop these guys off. And oh boy, you can let them dangle there if you so choose. I'll uh, get them removed here in a second. But that is... Hey, you can also just do this from the uh, left side if you don't have the headset on first. I prefer to have the headset on first. Just because I think it's easier. But yeah. Headset comes off. And voila, helmet is back to stock. And of course, you got the little shroud up here. And da, da, da. So I think that covers just about everything. You can get a big Velcro piece here. You can probably get some aftermarket or replacement Velcro parts, mount them up on here. I'm not sure why it doesn't come with those. I guess it's nice, but not necessarily needed. And that is more or less the SF bump helmet. So. The, the paint really is what makes it premium. The little stuccoing nature of it all, so. I know painters, that's right, I know what stucco is. I got beat growing up as a child, I know about stucco. <laughs> uh, there's your little cable routing hole up there. So I think I covered just about everything. Um, so, if you have a ballistic helmet, it's one of the earlier ones, and you want to get the cool rails, no reason not to get a bump helmet. If you want to just run night vision goggles and stuff, another great reason. Speaking of, from the... Ah, ancient yoke pack video. This is the, the, between this and the carbon fiber of the helmets you're going to want to have to mount into here. And I'm actually going to. Do I got enough battery? I think I have enough battery. I really need a new camera. I'm just going to unclip these. We're not going to do anything too crazy. What is that? That's a receipt. Da da. Da da. So I'll clip those. Got a bag going. What you can do. Because they make plenty of kits for it and put the nods inside the helmet and then they got those little like helmet things you can close them up. Oh man, that's pretty. Look at that. This goes right in there. Seal it up. And shabam! You got your nods and you got a helmet to mount them on. So you can throw on your cool kid boonie hat. Maybe some ear pro. Go out on your recon. Gets dark. Slap down the nods. Pool security. Or get ready to do other cool guy stuff. Yay! Alright, so... That oh, comes right out too. Super easy. I like that. It fits a lot better than the, uh, the other helmet I got. So, that is all I have for you guys today. If you have any questions about the bump helmet... Um, I mean, I could probably go swimming in it if you really want to know what it does with salt water. And you gotta scrub it all out with clean water after. But yeah, these pads, pads should be fine. Oh, if you're going stock, it comes with this sort of like wild front pad here that's pretty thin it's made out almost it feels like it's just made out of felt i do think the not just because it's sf but just because it is a beefy pad that that this pad alone this pad and that nate pad makes the entire upgrade worth it so that is all i have for you fine ladies and gentlemen feel free to drop any comments questions concerns down below these rails will probably be swapped out here shortly. And as always, 
Stay chill, boys. This has been the Good Sir Night. Thank you for watching another video. Short little shout out for what I call the. Um, I always forget to do it, but I do have a Patreon with two pa with two patrons, which is pretty cool. Decent number. And uh, I do want to give a shout out to both uh, Dark Magic ninety six and the Weepy Lamb. Weepy Lamb being a fellow YouTuber and Dark Magic being one of my friends. Going to their wedding later. Gonna be pretty cool. So cheers, everyone. Stay chill, boys. And I will catch you in later videos. Feel free to ask any questions you want about the helmet. I will do the best to my capability to answer it. And no, I don't know how many baseball hits it takes to crack this thing open. Nor do I know how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. However, one is probably significantly cheaper to find out than the other if you watch your own results. So, thank you everyone. Take care. And um, again, Happy New Year. Um, hopefully, I'm going to try to knock out as many videos today as I can. Because... Getting the stars to align, not the easiest thing to do. Cheers, everyone, and uh, peace out, and um, all those other cool things hang loose. Bye. I have a button here somewhere, right?